last week we uh, spoke about uh, complex numbers and the uses of complex numbers, uh, vectors in algebra uh, continue, uh, containing, uh, including linear vector spaces and uh, the meaning of linear systems. Uh, these problems frequently occur in our geophysical uh, studies. Uh, today we are going to speak about uh, matrices uh, determinants, eigenvalues, singular values, and we will end with matrix inversion. Uh, but we will start with uh, the so-called vector norm. Last week, we spoke about the norm and the definition of norm, and we know also that norm is a certain measure, measure for the size, for the size of a matrix. Of course, we understand that for scalar values, we can determine the size directly through the so-called the magnitude. For example, if you have a mass, how many kilograms, it completely defines the mass. The length, how many meters, it completely defines the uh, lenses. Now, we are going to speak about vectors and the matrices. I have uh, to search for certain uh, measures to identify the size of the matrix or the size of the vectors. This is very important, as you may know through this course or even in other courses, especially if you have uh, courses speaking about inverse problem in, uh, uh, inverse problem in geophysics, that uh, these measures are very important to determine the, the lenses or the size of ambiguity or errors. That's why we are speaking about these sizes here. And uh, we might, at the end of this uh, class or at the end of this uh, semester realize how important these subjects are to our study. Beginning with the so-called so LB norm, uh, P here is used as a dummy script, uh, some variable that define the order of our norm. Defining this using the relation the norm of a vector uh, x l b equal summation of the element of the absolute values of the element of this vector raised to the power b and then the summation itself is uh, raised to the power 1 divided by b or taking the b root of the summation okay the most common uh, one is L2 norm. The L2 norm is uh, simply the multiplication or the square of each element of the vector. This uh, relation x transpose x means that suppose I have vector x equal x1, x2, x3, then x transpose x equal x1, x2, and x3. This is the transpose of the vector, the original vector, times the original one, which x1, x2, x3. This yield summation of x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square. Then the norm, the L2 norm of a vector is the square root of the squaring of all its elements as you see on the, on the board. So the, uh, the definition for L2 norm, which is used frequently in least squares. You know least squares, of course. So in least squares, the x here is uh, the measure 
of the, uh, be, uh, the, of the distance between the model or the fitting and the actual data. So we are looking in least squares to minimize the x, the L2 norm of vector x, and uh, trying to make it zero to find the best fit. Uh, other type of norms are special, uh, which is special case, are the infinity norm. In infinity norm, we look for the elements x1, x2, and x3, and we choose the largest one. The largest one here represents the L infinity norm. Now we are going to, to have some example about norms from L1 to L infinity using the relation just, you just seen uh, on the slides. Uh, we have vector 1, 2, 3, and we are going to define the L1 vector. The L1 vector is a summation of the element of the vector, which means it's 1 plus 2 plus 3, which gives, in our case, the value of 6. Okay? The L2 norm, as we mentioned on the, blackboard, on the whiteboard, it is the, the summation of the square of the element. So it's 1 square plus 2 square plus 9 square, which uh, is square root of uh, 14, giving the value of 3.742. OK? The L3 norm, applying the same relation, it's 1 to the power 3, 2 to the power 3, 3 to the power 3, and we, we add these values together, and then take the third root of this value, which gives 3.3, sorry. And then, the, as, uh, in the same sense, we make I4, and as we, uh, we, speak, uh, we, we just mentioned in the previous slide, the I infinity is the largest number or the, or the largest element of the vector. So we have this value. So as you see, we are approaching, in, in, the, in the measure or the norm, we are approaching the L infinity. Now we move to matrix norm. You know, matrix is made, can be subdivided into either column vectors or row vectors. We also seek for determining the size of the matrix using the norm definition. We have five properties. The first one is that the norm of matrix uh, A is greater than or equal zero. So it's a very important point that we, when you go measure the size of a matrix, you did enter, you 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 do not end up with negative value. If you end up with negative value, you realize that you you made some mistake in certain uh, steps of your solution. Uh, the norm, the second, the second one, the norm of a matrix A equals zero if and only if the matrix A is a null matrix, which means all the elements of the matrix are zero. And something like that, null matrix. matrix A of null element. All its elements are zero. The third one, the norm of multiplying scalar K with, with a matrix 
equals the absolute value of the scalar, absolute making, meaning that we, we take the plus value, we, we, we do, there is no negative. If I have negative value, I will uh, take it, reverse it or invert it to plus value. So I'm taking the absolute value of the scalar times the norm of a matrix. The norm of addition of two matrices A and B is less than or equal the, no the addition of the norm of each matrix. The norm of matrix A and the, the norm of matrix B. This is explained by an example here on the blackboard, on the whiteboard, sorry. Suppose I have two matrices, matrix A with element minus one, one, and two, three. Another matrix B of 1, 2, minus 3, and 1. The norm of the first matrix, which defines the, 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 the absolute value of its elements, <coughs> as we're going to see, is always higher, larger than the summation, because the summation of these two matrix, when you sum this, end up with matrix C, minus one plus one, we have zero here, uh, one uh, plus two here, it's three, uh, two minus three is minus one, and three plus one is four. So the norm, or the absolute value of each of this element individually is actually greater than the summation before making the norm, which stated here in step four. The, sub, the, the norm of the sum of two matrices A plus B always less than or equal, and equal if we have no negative sign or so in both matrices, the norm of matrix A and the norm of matrix B. This is very important in uh, deriving certain relations that we are going to use in our uh, course. The final one, the multiplication of two matrices A, B, and then taking the norm of this multiplication is always less than or equal the norm of matrix B multiplied by the norm of matrix A. Uh, sorry, the norm of matrix A multiplied by mat uh, the norm of matrix B. So the norm of a matrix is a measure of how large its elements are. Uh, and as we said, it's a way of determining the size of a matrix that's not necessarily related to how many rows or columns of the matrix. So. One of the properties, it's not uh, just because the matrix has many rows and columns, it doesn't mean that its uh, norm should be greater than or less than other matrix with different rows and columns. Now we are taking certain or special cases of matrix norm. Uh, we'll speak about the one norm, L1 norm, L2 norm, and L infinity norm. The L1 norm, the definition, the, mathem the mathematical definition of L1 norm is uh, the norm of a matrix equal the maximum element of each row. Okay, uh, sorry, of each column. We, we have, for example, this uh, example, we have a matrix one and minus two and uh, minus seven and minus three. So we add the absolute values of each column vector. The first column one minus two equal the summation is three. 
The second column, minus 7 and minus 3, the summation is 10. In this case, the, uh, the L1 norm of a matrix, of this matrix, is 10. We are taking here the maximum summation of the absolute value of each column. Okay? Another example we are going to, to have, this one also uh, L1 norm, but for a matrix of uh, size 3 by 3 or 3 rows times 3 columns. As you see, we make the same uh, situation, the same solution. We have the first column is 5 plus 1 plus 2, which give 8. The second column is 4. We, we ignore, and this must be taken into consideration and must be used very uh, carefully. We eliminate the negative sign. We are using all, always the positive sign. So now we end up with the summation of the three columns as 8, 7, and 5. It's obviously that the L1 norm for this Matrix is eight. Is there any problem? Yes. Okay. Norm is a measure or is a method to measure how the matrix is large, okay? It's not, it's not like raising this uh, value or this uh, elements with, with power. It's only how this matrix, how to measure the size of this matrix. So we have, we have, we are going to speak about three cases. The first one, which is L1 norm, that we find the, the column, we have three, here in this case we have three column vectors, okay? To find the, the vector that has the, 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 that has the largest value when its, um, which, uh, when its element is sum. Is it uh, clear or need more clearance? Yes. So there is no need for raising to, to power here or something. So it's clear that the, the summation for the three vector, column vector is 8, 7, and 5. And then the maximum of these three values are 8. So the, the one norm of the matrix A, the, the one norm of matrix A is 8. Going to the infinity norm. For infinity norm, we do our, the same situation like the uh, one norm, but on the row vectors. As you know, we have column vectors and row vectors. In L1 norm, we, we sum the absolute value of the elements of the column vector. For L infinity norm, we sum the absolute value of row vectors. So for our example here, matrix, the same matrix as before, 1 and minus 2 and minus 7 and minus 3, we sum the first low, uh, sorry, row, and it is 1 plus 7, which gives 8, and the second row is 2 plus 3, which 5. So the L infinity norm of matrix A given here equal 8. Okay, it's uh, in fact L1 and L infinity norm for matrix is very simple. Okay. We have also the same, also the same example as before. We have a matrix B with a dimension 3 times 3, 3 columns, 3 rows times 3 columns. And we define the, uh, the L infinity norm by is there any, any problem there? Is there any question? 
summing the absolute value of the elements of uh, the three rows we have. So the first row is 5 plus 4 plus 2, which gives 11. The second row, 1, 2, 3, which gives 6. 2 plus 1 gives 3. So the L infinity norm of this matrix is 11. Now going to Euclidean norm. And also this type of norm is used for in the problem of uh, lamb like least squares and in the problems in uh, inversion, frequently used in these uh, applications, which uh, looks like a Pythagorean uh, relation or Pythagorean lens. Uh, here, the elements of the matrix are squared, then summed, and then we take the square root of a matrix. So for the same example, we have one square, which is one, minus seven square gives 49, and minus two square is, with, is four, and minus three square is nine. The solution is square root of six is three, which equal uh, about uh, 7.937. So in, in a square, in the Euclidean norm, we, we, need, we need not to bother or, or to worry about the negative sign because multiplication of negative sign uh, give us the positive one. So uh, multiplying the, 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 the negative uh, element with itself is uh, positive uh, value. So we, we need not to bother, bother ourselves with uh, defining or worry, worry about defining the positive or taking the, the absolute. We have also the same example, which gave us the, Euclid, the Euclid, Euclidean norm of the value of eight. Now we move to other type of measure. Now we move to other type of measure of the size of a matrix, which is called the determinants. Uh, by definition, determinants is a function which, as an input, accepts n times n matrix, and output is a real or a complex number that's called determinant of the input matrix. One way to define the determinant of an n times n matrix A is following the formula determinant of A equal summation over the indices from I1 to IN uh, plus or minus AI1, AI2, uh, and AIN. Okay. In this formula, the terms are summed over all permutation from I1, I2, IN, and the sign is positive for even permutation and the negative for odd ones. Uh, I guess you, 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 you met uh, determinants before. Or it's, uh, so this one, the determinant of a matrix uh, A, B, and C, D is simply uh, A, D minus B, C. Okay, it's multiplication uh, of this element minus the multiplication of this element. Okay, when the determinant is uh, much, uh, or when the matrix is uh, larger, we we'll say three times three, so it's uh, uh, a one one. So we may use this one, this row, and then we eliminate this. Uh, we eliminate, uh, we take, we, uh, for example, we, we have A11, we eliminate those, this row and this vector, and time A11 times A22 times uh, A33 minus A23 times A32. 
Okay. So here is the solution of the determinant and for three, three, for three times three uh, matrix. Okay. You have any question? Is there any problem? Okay, um, uh, I need your concentration because eigenvector is, uh, or eigenvalues is somehow more complicated than those items we spoke about before uh, in, this, in the start of this class. Eigenvalues, we will define the eigenvalues through the definition of the so-called eigenvectors. Any vector, when multiplied by a matrix, it will change its direction. You know, vector is a magnitude and direction. I'm going, I'm moving with velocity, something from this place to this place. So this is a vector from starting point to ending point. This vector change direction when it's multiplied by a matrix. So the, the matrix is responsible for changing the directions. But there is, there are some vectors that when multiplied by the matrix, keep their direction. Their direction does not change. This type of vectors is called the eigenvectors. Okay? And they obey the relation A, which is a matrix, time the vector x, equal lambda x, where lambda is a scalar. So the effect of multiplying the vector by a matrix does not imply change in direction, but a change in magnitude, either stretching or decreasing or even going to equal zero. If it equals zero, it, we call it is in, uh, fill in the uh, null space. Now, so lambda here is which is a scalar, uh, 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 identify the amount of a change in the magnitude of the vector. This lambda is now called the eigenvalue. So we have a times a time x equal lambda x, which uh, the, uh, means that we keep our direction, but the magnitude, it change. Uh, eigenvalues are useful in studying dynamic problem, like what we are using, what we are studying in, in seismic method. Seismic method is dynamic. We, we have fluctuations, we have waves, and the amplitude uh, change. So the, it's a dynamic uh, problem and we, we need some other uh, techniques to, to be used in this uh, problem to solve uh, efficiently. The eigenvalue lambda tells whether the special vector x is stretched or shrunk or reversed or left unchanged. When lambda equal 1, the vector is left unchanged when it's multiplied by a. For example, if lambda equal two, it means that the magnitude of the of the uh, the magnitude of the vector is increased by two. When uh, equal half, it's shortened by uh, half. Minus one means it change its direction in reverse, uh, in reverse, or say in the same direction, but in reverse order. And finally, when multiplied by one, it's uh, the same uh, vector. The eigenvalue could be zero. In this case, a times x equal uh, zero x, which is, means that the eigenvector x is in the null space. Now we're going to have an example for the eigenvalue. Suppose we have a matrix A, point 0.8, point 0.3, point 0.2, and point 0.7. These are the elements of the matrix A. So first we define 
the determinant of uh, the, the matrix 0 0.8 minus lambda, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 minus 7, uh, by, uh, 0.7 minus lambda. It uh, can be explained on the in the board. Here matrix A times vector x equal lambda x. So Ax minus lambda x equal null. Okay, null vector or zero vector. Which means taking the vector x uh, as a common between these two terms. So it's A minus lambda i, which where i is identity matrix. Times x equal null. So x is not null vector as we, we, we know in the previous. We have this is known to us. It's x is not null uh, vector. So it should be a minus lambda i equal zero. Okay. So this one is a minus lambda i. This is a matrix, A minus lambda times the identity matrix. You know, of course, identity matrix. We spoke in last, uh, last week. Okay? Which transform the matrix from this form to this one. Then we solve the determinant and get the, the second degree uh, equation. Lambda squared minus 3 uh, uh, divided by 2 lambda plus half. Uh, equal minus uh, lambda, uh, sorry, sorry. This one can be solved uh, in this form, which means that either lambda equal 1 or lambda equal minus, uh, equal uh, half, 1 over 2. Okay? Is it clear? Okay. Omit this. We have, sorry, you, you didn't study in your Brie University uh, stage the solution of second degree uh, algebraic equation analysis. This one. We have lambda square plus, uh, sorry, minus three over two lambda plus half equals zero. Okay. So you analyze this. Here is lambda and here. Okay? And then the, this half could be one and a half to get this. So this is negative and negative. This equals zero. So either lambda equal one or lambda equal half. Is it okay? Okay. So we have two eigenvalues here. Is there any problem? So we have two eigenvalues here, one and half. For the value of, of one, sorry. The vector is kept the same, the, the eigenvector is kept the same, and for the, uh, or the left and change it, for the value of, uh, of half, the vector is shrink to 
uh, shrink to uh, to its half uh, lens. Here, the matrix A minus lambda i is a singular matrix. Why it is a singular matrix? You know what is a singular matrix? <coughs> yes. Do you, do you have any idea what is a singular matrix? A singular matrix is a matrix with zero determinant. Okay? It's here. We, we equate this determinant with zero to, to, the, to find the value of the, of the eigenvalues. So the determinant equals zero. You know, in, uh, when, when we're going to speak further on matrix inversion, you, we, realize that we realize that we are going to uh, divide the elements by the determinant of the matrix. Okay? When the determinant of the matrix is zero, so you are, defined, you are dividing something by zero, okay? Which is not accepted in, in mathematics. You, can, you cannot divide one, for example, by, by zero. It's rejected, okay? So, in this case, we cannot find the inverse. Okay, we have we have no me we have no uh, idea, uh, method in this stage to how to to define or how to get the inverse of a matrix since the determinant equals zero. So we call it singular. So it uh, becomes singular because it has zero determinant. The eigenvectors can be defined or can be deduced through this relation and from this relation we get two eigenvectors. The first one is 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 and the second one is 1 and minus 1. Okay? Now we are facing matrix inversion. First, we are doing or carrying out matrix inversion to solve system of algebraic equation or to solve geophysical pro uh, problem using, for example, least square method. So I have least squares method. I have to uh, carry out inversion. And inversion means to find the inverse of a matrix. As we just uh, we have just said, a square matrix is singular if determinant A equals zero. And it's, it's very important for us when we are going to speak about inversion to take into consideration that matrix, matrix that's subjected to inversion must must be square. Square matrix means we have the same number of rows and columns. So it's either 2 times 2, 4 times 4, 3 times the same number of columns, the same number of rows. This type of, of matrix is called square matrix. If I'm going to ask you to invert matrix of, say, 4 rows and 5 uh, columns, you say, no, I can't because it's not square matrix. So maybe in, in, the, in the test, you will find some, you will face something like that. This type may, is, uh, of questions is usually used to, to differentiate between the one who uses his uh, mind or his brain uh, from that one who is like, uh, for example, uh, like recorder. He, he knows when, when you get a matrix, you do one, two, three, four to get the first. So he, he will waste all the time of the exam trying to to find the inverse of a matrix that cannot be inverted. So the first condition is that the matrix should be square matrix. The, uh, if the determinant of a matrix equals zero, so I have none, I have singular matrix, which means I have, I cannot invert this matrix. 
When I have determinant equal zero, uh, uh, in this case, I have non-unique solution. You know, in, in, in algebra and uh, linear algebra, we have three kinds of solutions. We have unique solution, we have non-unique solution, and we have no solution. So when I get, when I get the determinant of a matrix A equal zero, so I, I may have non-unique solution, I may have linear dependence I, or, or degeneracy uh, between the vectors or the equations comprising the linear system. Uh, in fact, we have many inversion scheme. Uh, but I, I like the um, Gauss reduction because it's simpler to understand. It's simpler to, to use in computer to, to, uh, to, uh, to, be, to be programmed and to be used in uh, computer uh, software. However, to apply Gauss elimination or Gauss reduction method, we, we are making use of three important properties. The first one is the change in, in exchange or interchange of two rows. Suppose I have matrix in this form. I can change the interchange, the two rows in this form. Without changing the determinant or the, or the size of the matrix. The, the matrix itself remains the same. So I change the, the rows and the, I, the, the system of linear algebraic equation is kept the same. The second property is that I can multiply a row by a constant factor. I can multiply certain row by a value and it's okay for Gauss elimination. We speak about this when we are going to, to discuss how we make the uh, inversion. The third, the third point is, to, is that I can add uh, a multiple of one row to another, which means I can say I will multiply the first row by something like A, and then plus or minus the second row. Okay? These are the two, the three uh, operations that we are going to use to apply Gauss elimination method. The key point here is that for matrix inverse or using Gauss elimination method, uh, we use a sequence of row operation applied to a square matrix to reduce it to identity matrix. So I am moving from this matrix to the identity matrix. I want to, to transfer this, this matrix to ident identity matrix in this form. Okay. Of the same size then the same sequence of operation applies to I to be reduced to the inverse. Here, A power minus 1 is, denotes the inverse of a matrix. We have three points to take care of. We, if we cannot reduce A, if it's not possible to reduce the original matrix A to the identity matrix, so A inverse of a matrix does not exist. The second one, there is no unique root. So I, I, I cannot follow the same root. I may use 
thing, certain route, you other may say, use another route. I mean, what does it mean by route? I have three operations. I have interchanging rows. I have multiplying the, the row, uh, row by value. And I have also multiplying row and sum or subtract from another row. These are the routes. I may ch start with interchanging rows first. Uh, you may use another route. You, you, want, you may start with multiplying by a number. You, then you interchange, there you do so and so and so, till you find the solution. So we have no unique route to, to transform A to identity matrix. The third one, it's more efficient to do the, the reduction from A to the identity matrix and from identity matrix to inverse matrix simultaneously. And that's what we are going to, to see now in the uh, example we are going to have. Here is an example. We have matrix A. In this form, we have 1, 3, 3, 1, 4, 3, 2, 7, 7. As a start, we put the two matrices, the original matrix and the identity matrix uh, in front or at the same uh, table. Maybe, maybe we can use it in another form called augmented matrix. Might be used. In this form, here is our original matrix, say here 1, 3, 3, 1, 4, 3, and 2, 7, 7. Here we put the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we apply all the operations simultaneously on this augmented matrix, called this augmented matrix. Okay. Here we are using this route. You may change the route as we, we, we speak about this uh, just a moment. Uh, for example, we, you can uh, subtract the first row from the second one. So subtract this one from this. Here the second row becomes 0, 1, 0. Okay? Subtracting 1 minus 1, 3 from 4 or 4 minus 3 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, so I have 0, 1, 0. Doing the same the same operation on the identity matrix. So we subtract the first row from the second one and put the result in the second row. It becomes minus one, one, and zero. Okay? And then we multiply the first row by two and subtract from the third row. This yields that the third row becomes zero, one, one. Result from multiplying the second row by two, so it's two, six, six. And then we go and uh, subtract from here, from the third one. So it's two minus one. Uh, two minus two equals zero. Seven minus six equals one. Seven minus six equals one. We are going to do the same for the identity matrix, which yield the third row become minus two, zero, and one. And then, this is called root. Root means way. Okay? In Bahasa Malaysia, it's lalwan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay? Uh, then we, we uh, uh, subtract the second row from the third one. Okay? And now I arrive with this form. It's the third one becomes 0, 0, 1, while in identity matrix it's minus 1, minus 1, and 1. And then I multiply 
the third row by three, okay, and subtract from the first row and put the result where in the first row. The first row here, the three is now become zero. Of course, because the, the other value in the third row is zero, so uh, three times zero is zero, three times zero is zero, so the other two values are kept the same. We do the same situation, the same operation for the identity matrix. Okay? Now, as a final one, we multiply the second row by three and subtract from the first row, which gave me finally that the first matrix to become identity matrix, while the identity matrix gave me this matrix 7, 0, minus 3, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Now, if I multiply the, the, the new matrix, this one is the inverse matrix, by the original one, the result should equal to the identity matrix. Okay. This ends uh, today's uh, lecture. If you have any question, we'll give about five minutes to, to reply. <laughs>